listen, it's been a long day for me, but I could not go to bed before spilling this tea for y'all. Some of y'all may not know this character, but those of us who've been talking politics for years um, from before Donald Trump got into office, y'all are going to remember Pastor Daryl Scott. Pastor Daryl Scott that used to be on CNN as a political commentator. He was on the side with Paris Denard. They were the ones that would dispatch out to news media to be a support for Donald Trump. They were the chosen black men to go out to news media to support Donald Trump. They were the ones that were supposed to make black people think that Donald Trump wasn't racist. This right here is Pastor Daryl Scott. Y'all remember him now? Yeah, he was he was a part of the crew with Omarosa at the very beginning of Donald Trump's presidency. But before Donald Trump got into the White House, he would be out there with Paris Denard. Well, baby, Pastor Daryl Scott is going TF off over there on social media on these new MAGA Republicans, specifically Charlie Kirk. Now, y'all know Charlie Kirk has been out there publicly. Now he's attacking DEI. Y'all know he said some slick shit about Dr. Martin Luther King on the holiday, right? And he's since been saying slick shit about black people in DEI. He said something about um, if he's on a plane and the company has a DEI program and the plane was being flown by a black person, he would get off it or he would be nervous or something crazy, something racist. And so these are the things that Charlie Kirk has been saying. And I guess he just went a bridge too far. And Pastor Daryl Scott came out with this. In a meeting discussing voter outreach to different demographics, suburban white women, evangelicals, gun owners, black community, Hispanics, unions, one person said, quote, Trump needs to just make up anything to say to black people. Lie to them. It doesn't matter. End quote. And he goes on to say, would you think the person who said that is racist? So, you know, right away, folks is like, who is he talking about? Right. But then I get down into the comments and this rocket raccoon up here at on the top. This is what he says. Maybe wouldn't say they're racist. What? But they definitely have an inferior view of black intellect, dignity, and worth. That's racist. So Pastor Scott comes back and says, all racism isn't cruel. The attitude of superiority over another race because of color is racist. So the rocket raccoon comes back with this. Understood. I generally view racism from the systemic segregation tradi traditional view. Which is why I'm reluctant to label someone a racist. I don't even want to read no more of it. Angel, a white woman, comes in and say, we shouldn't be judging on skin color, period. Kathy Kay comes in, another white woman, and says, that one person should be removed from the outreach program. Kathy's like, nah, we ain't playing none of these games. And Pastor Daryl Scott comes back and says, Charlie Kirk said it. I was there. I mean, that's no shocker to us. Ever since Charlie Kirk stepped up, stepped up on the scene, he's been a racist mofo, right? He has gained the notoriety and the fame and the platform that he has because of his racism. Anywho, 
Pastor Daryl Scott ain't done. He got some other stuff he has to get off his chest. He goes on further to tweet, I was out there taking bullets for Trump and the Republican Party, battling on CNN and MSNBC on our behalf when Carrie Lake was voting for Obama. Charlie Kirk was backing Ted Cruz and Candace Owens was running an anti-Trump website talking about his penis. You better ask somebody about me. I've seen him come and go. Now, see, we've been telling y'all for years, this Candace Owens is not the Candace Owens that used to be over there on YouTube. Candace Owens signed on a dotted line to provide the Republican Party with the token black person. Because before that, she was over on YouTube running a YouTube page where she was completely anti-Trump. She was dragging Trump. She got a phone call. No, what happened was she, she ended up doing a video agreeing with something that Trump said. I forget what it was. She agreed with him and her numbers skyrocketed. And then she got noticed by Mr. Horowitz and she hooked up with Mr. Horowitz and Turning Point USA. Charlie Kirk's thing he got going on. But hold on, Pastor Daryl Scott's not done. He goes on to make another tweet. I've defended Trump and the Republican Party against charges of racism in heated exchanges since 2015 on CNN, MSNBC, PBS, etc. He was with Paris Denard out there doing what Paris Denard was doing. I was watching him. I can attest to that. He goes on to say, I've argued with Al Sharpton, Don Lemon, Bakari Sellers, Angela Rye, Tara Setmeyer, Bill Crystal, Anderson Cooper, Brooke Baldwin, Aaron Burnett, and a host of others de defending Trump. Most of those people were over on CNN. I can't remember if um, Reverend Al was on CNN at the time or if Reverend Al was over on MSNBC. But yeah, I've witnessed him battling with all of these people. When he was number 17 in a field of 17, and nobody gave him a chance to win. He's talking about Donald Trump. And the Republican Party, I've been called a COON, a sellout, a race trader, an Uncle Tom, a bootlicker. I've lost millions of dollars. I've been boycotted, threatened, followed, harassed, and got into, hold on, many confrontations. Friendships were lost. Family members were alienated. So excuse me if it pisses me off when people like Charlie Kirk, a former crew supporter who came along after the sacrifices were made after Trump won, make racist statements from the platform of the Republican Party that I've defended against racism for the last nine years. I wasn't quiet then, and I won't be quiet now. He goes on. There's an element in the Republican Party that wants to hijack the RNC, replace Ronna McDaniels with a turning point esque leader and return the GOP back to the days of the Lily White movement. That's why the relentless public attacks on Rona from within the party, you would never see the DNC acting like this. Never see a faction in their party throwing, trying to overthrow their leadership. And I said to myself, has he opened his eyes? Is he now seeing them for who they are? And then I blew up that profile picture. When you get up close and personal with the profile picture, nah, he ain't opening his eyes. He's just in fear of being replaced. Daryl Scott, they've always been that way. They're just now more free to be who they are. Mm.